When I was in college, I realized that a lot of my issues with the education system and why I wasn't doing so great in classes was because I would try to memorize information without really learning the information. And after I started learning the content, grades kind of responded. And in my personal life, I realized that I could just study scenarios to become more familiar with how to handle them and that would also quell my anxiety. In my personal life, I've become a big studier. I will research anything in order to become more comfortable with the situation. For instance, I got a dog, so I started reading a bunch of dog guidebooks. I recently, at the beginning of the year, decided that I would like to go to graduate school and so I either needed to get a much higher salary or save a bunch more money and so I went down the rabbit hole of negotiation books and it led me to a new job and that led me to new job books and girl boss books. When I was going down the rabbit hole, there are a couple books that have stood out to me so far and I thought that maybe you guys would like to hear about my CEO discoveries and my advocation for women in the workplace. A lot of this advice also applies to guys, so if you are a Y chromosomal folk or a masculine identified person, please know that some of this advice is across the field and will work for you. At the very least, it's very useful to know what your peers are going through and it'll make you more empathetic partner and a more collaborative work partner. The book that I am talking about today is Machiavelli for Women, which was written by Stacey Smith. The fundamentals of Machiavelli for Women is that it focuses on the work The Prince by Machiavelli. The Prince was a piece of literature written by Machiavelli after he was expelled from the land where he worked in a political arena and he was replaced by a prince and the prince did not want this competition around. Machiavelli had written the work, the prince, in order to appease the new prince and hopefully get a position in the political council. That's kind of like the TLDR, like explained to a fifth grader explanation, but the thing is it's more in depth than that and um, just read the comments, people will be telling me how I'm all wrong about the way I just described the scenario. In short, The Prince was written by Machiavelli for a prince in order to try to garner some support or a position on the council. It didn't work and he was expelled for the rest of his life and he wrote some great works as a result. I read The Prince in philosophy class, so I thought this would be kind of like a cheap grab at clinging onto the name Machiavelli in order to get exposure to a larger audience. I was incredibly surprised that this is a great standalone piece of work and it had so much great advice. I thought this would just be a quick easy cringe fest to knock out and be able to make a quick funny video about. It turns out it's my favorite book about careers that I have ever read in my entire life and I could not recommend it high enough. This book was written by Stacey Smith and she was the host of The Indicator. She was a producer on Planet Money. After I started it, I recognized that I recognized her voice because I got the audiobook version because I did not expect to really like this book very much. I started off on my book deep dive with this book, which is very straightforward. And when I read you the name, you're gonna be like, oh, I know why she read that. It is Women Don't Ask, The High Cost of Avoiding Negotiation and Positive Strategies for Change. So it's about negotiating. And in Machiavelli for Women, they reference this book multiple times. They reference conversations with the author, Linda Babcock, and that was a very affirming mention because I thought this book was great. I've recommended it to people I work with. Other references in the book include Claire Wasserman of Ladies Get Paid, which is another book on my reading list. That was kind of affirming knowing that the author, Stacey Smith, was doing a similar reading list to my own. And then the advice in the book is just fantastic. Stacy has been working on the book for multiple years and you could tell that from the breadth of information provided there are all sorts of stories, interviews with other authors, with CEOs, with women 
in workplaces, stories from Stacy's own life as a producer for NPR podcasts. I found the stories to be incredibly illustrative of the experiences that I've had in the workplace, and there's plenty of actionable advice. After having read so many of these, like, job strategy, career books, podcasts, articles, YouTube videos, it seems to me that a lot of people ignore the dirty truth because nobody wants to admit that it's true that men and women, if they behave equally, if they do the same type of work, the same quality, will be judged differently. Even if the woman acts exactly like the man does, or excuse me, even if the feminine presenting person behaves in the same exact way as the masculine presenting person, they will be judged differently. I feel like I know what a lot of you are thinking, like, Julie, aren't you based out of St. Louis? Like, of course Midwesterners are going to hold you to the standards of traditional femininity in the workplace. But I also worked in New York City for two and a half years. And I will tell you that they are just as strict about gender roles. There is just as much workplace chatter about whether or not you are behaving appropriately. And that appropriateness is tied back to some traditional ideas of what a feminine worker and what a masculine worker is supposed to be like. So this is something I've seen kind of universal. I have seen it in global organizations and in local organizations. So, I mean, it's unfortunate, it's big, it's real. In Machiavelli for Women, that is not hidden, not swept away, and Stacy provides actual, actionable recommendations for how to confront this. People like to imagine that if you just type your emails like a man, you're going to get respected the same amount as a man. But Machiavelli for Women, Stacy Smith emphasizes the importance of coming across in a way that is palatable for women to present themselves. And it backs it up with research and stories. And I thought that was incredibly valuable. I've heard so many discussions in the workplace about how you shouldn't soften your emails or how you shouldn't employ uptalk when you're speaking. And I feel like that is such a short-sighted way to approach the conversation. And I feel like I'm going to get a bunch of comments being like, uptalk is unprofessional. It's just like, okay, maybe you should do like five minutes worth of research because that's not necessarily the case. Uh, that's a little bit of a misogynist take there that you think that uh, uptalk and vocal technologies like it are unprofessional. So, you know, maybe take that upon yourself for a second. I thought that the advice in the book was really eye-opening and helpful. There's also a chapter on how to deal with different workplace bullies or aggressive personalities that are either male or female. Because in the workplace, you're going to bump into a bunch of people who treat you certain ways, who try to take advantage of you, who try to belittle you. And it's very helpful to know how to approach those personalities. My favorite chapter was a chapter that focuses explicitly on negotiating salary and compensation. Not all compensation is salary. Salary isn't all the compensation is. And it almost has a script of the back and forth that you can anticipate. And like, if you do this, they can do that. Here's what happens if they do that or if they do something else. I have been obviously studying negotiation with, you know, Women Don't Ask and other books and reading up and trying to figure out like what you're supposed to do actually in the workplace in order to find out how to get a higher salary or a different title or different benefits. And I really wish I would have read this book like, I don't know, like four months ago because it has like an almost script of what to say. I could not recommend this book enough. It is an actual boss babe resource. Like if you would like to be a feminine presenting person who gets ahead, then I highly recommend reading this book. I hope that you enjoyed this first installment of She EO Book Club. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm reading a couple of books. Whenever I get like kind of down the rabbit hole, like on a certain genre, it's just kind of fun to compare the books within the genre to each other, which is why I landed on this book and I'm really enjoying it. I'm also reading Ladies Get Paid by Claire Wasserman, which is also a group online. They had their own Slack, but they're moving to a new platform that they can own. 
that I appreciate. And they have really good webinars. I've enjoyed reading it so far. I've also read recently The First 90 Days, which is about what you're supposed to do in the first 90 days at an organization. It's been incredibly helpful. I liked it so much that I bought it. This one's a library book. And all elsewhere on the topic of girl bosses and CEOs, I'm reading literally the book Hashtag Girl Boss, which is kind of like a tragic tale because our Icarette flew a little too close to the sun there. And the horror novel Lean In, which is white liberal feminism, if you've ever seen it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is my very humble approach to booktube saying, please like me. I read a lot. I would like to talk about books. Let me know what you think about this video. I am working on other videos. This didn't really take away from them. Don't worry. This was just a quick record of my feelings about a book that I read that I did buy, if that helps you at all in understanding my relationship with the book. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and comment if you enjoyed it. It helps other people find the content. Bye! Thank you.